Hi and welcome to another video from The Grove Studio. This is going to be a quick one today. We're going to take a look at comparing the spot removal tool in Lightroom with some of your spot removal patching brushes and options in Photoshop. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm normally a really big advocate of using Lightroom for as much as you can because it's such a powerful software. However, the spot removal tool is actually one of those tools that I think could use a lot of improvement. And I much prefer the kind of smart abilities of the healing and patching and, and cloning options and all of that in Photoshop. It's just Photoshop is so much more made for retouching that I highly recommend doing any kind of removal of objects there but I wanted to really show you guys why there's a difference. So we have this photo of this exterior of a building and I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna go in a little bit closer and we're gonna to go to our spot removal tool. You can find it up here amongst the other brushes. Now if you click on that, there's a clone option and there's a heal option. The few times that I've used this tool I've put it on heal because that healing tends to be a more sort of uh, subtle and blended option as opposed to cloning. Cloning tends to be kind of like a really hard copy paste type of action. So we're going to leave it on heal and you can see here that you can adjust the size, you can adjust the feathering, the opacity, all of that. So let's say, for example, that we want to remove this light fixture here. I'm going to adjust the size so it's a little smaller. And I would probably normally be a little bit more zoomed in for this, but you'll see in a moment why it's actually a good idea to not be too zoomed in. So we're going to do a brush that makes sure to cover the entire light fixture there. And you can see that instantly, Lightroom selects a spot from somewhere else in the photo that it's going to use as kind of its template for what to replace that area with. And you can move this around and you can tell it where to actually use, but usually it's going to be a pretty good choice. Um, it, it is usually pretty good about selecting a good spot for its source. So assuming it's a good spot, then you can go ahead and click on done or click return and that's it. Now this is a pretty basic example, but I wanted to show you the process. So that's the process for cloning or I'm sorry for um, spot removal. And in this case, because it's sort of a plain wall, it's got some texture from the stucco, you can get away with it. but if you have any sort of more subtle gradient, if it's a really smooth wall that has a subtle gradient of light or light to shadow, shadow to light, or if you have any sort of complicated messy looking area, it's just gonna get more and more and more complicated. That is the basic process and that is pretty much it for this tool. Now I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop and I have here the same photo pulled up in Photoshop. And we're going to try a couple of different options so that you can see kind of what the abilities are within Photoshop to do the same thing. So we have our light here and you're gonna go to, you can press the letter J, it'll take you to these different uh, healing and patching tools. So let's start with the spot healing brush tool. And you have some options up here as to the size, the mode. I tend to just leave it at normal and you can do content aware, you can create a texture or do a proximity match. I typically will leave um, options. If there's a content aware option on Photoshop, I'll leave it on that. It tends to do a really great job of actually being smart about how to use the content, how to patch things up. So more often than not, content aware is gonna be a good option for you to go to. And you're going to go ahead and brush the area that you want to heal or correct. 
and then that's it. And it's quite seamless. It's pretty simple. Let's undo that and just to show you kind of what the different options are. So if we go to texture, create texture, it's going to do probably a little funky. Yeah, so it's creating a texture there. We don't want that. A proximity match, I believe it does something like what Lightroom does, where it essentially chooses something nearby to help mimic what it thinks it needs to patch that area with. So content aware or proximity match in this case, either would work well. I still stick with content aware just to be safe because I feel like more often than not, that's your best bet. The healing brush tool, this works very similarly. They kind of all work very similar. So you have to kind of see which ones are a good fit for your situation. But you have the options here of sampled or pattern and sampled is it works kind of like the clone tool. And you can see when I'm doing this, there's that little cross to the left. Uh, that's because you can actually, just like the clone tool, you can select a source point and then it'll use that to kind of patch it in. Now the interesting thing is you pick a point and then you can see that it actually modifies your source so that it blends better. So it's not a direct clone. You can see initially it goes over a little dark and then it kind of adjusts it to make sure that it blends really well. So this is what I mean when I say that these tools are kind of smart tools because they're really doing a lot of the thinking of how is this supposed to blend so that it's seamless. Pattern, you can pick patterns here. Um, I never really select this option because there's never really a good use for it. Uh, you can see it just leaves a pattern where you mark it. So I don't recommend ever really using that one. Next, we're going to go to my favorite, the patch tool. And this is kind of my go-to tool for removing any kind of objects. I first go to this. And if for some reason it doesn't work out well, then I will try some of the other ones. But this for me is hands down the easiest to work with. You literally just freehand draw around the area that you want to fix, that you want to remove. You go around it and then inside you click and drag to wherever you want it to use as a source and then it'll do the blending for you. The other way to do this, up here you have the options of source or destination. So I was just in source. If you pick destination, you're going to do it the other way around, meaning I'm going to say, okay, I want to take this area here and I want to sample it over to this bit over here to cover up. So maybe I take this area and I'm going to cover that up. And it will blend whatever is underneath the areas that I drag my sample over to. I find it much easier personally to use the source because then I circle exactly what I want to remove. And then I drag it to where is a good fit for it to kind of sample a source. If I was going to do it the other way, I just feel like um, it feels a little backwards. <laughs> so this is definitely one of those personal preference things. Find what works best for you. But the patch tool for me is hands down my go to for any kind of object removal. I wanted to show you this one more. So the last one I'm not going to show you. It's the red eye tool, obviously, for interiors and architects or architecture it's just not really going to apply. So we're going to go to the content aware move tool and we're going to play with that one. This one's interesting. And to be honest, I never actually use this one. This is good if you want to relocate an object. So say, for example, this light right here, this flood light, say I wanted it to be lower. I can circle around the object I want to move. And then say I want it to be down here. I put it in its new spot and it gives me this little transform box. I can click enter and my original is gone and it's in my new spot. 
So there's really not a whole lot of occasions where there's a need for this, but it's just a good one to know about in case you have a situation where you want to actually relocate an object, then this might be a tool to consider. So as you can see, Photoshop really does offer such a wider array of options for removing objects and the tools really have a lot more of like a smart ability to them. So I hope this has been helpful and hopefully this has convinced you to do your retouching and object removal in Photoshop. And if you have any questions, please drop a comment under the video. You can always reach out to me. We're available on Instagram. You can email me directly and you can go to the website and get all of our information. If you liked the video, please click like. If you want to see more or get notified when new ones come out, please subscribe to the Grove Studio channel. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope this has been really helpful and I'll see you in the next video.